Okay, so now let's move on to this concept of flow. Flow is basically the movement of a liquid from one location to another location. Of course, we're talking about the cardiovascular system here, so we're going to be talking about the flow of blood, okay? So in order to get liquid, such as blood, to flow, you're going to need two main things, okay? First thing you're going to need is a driving force, okay? And that driving force is going to be a pressure difference between two points, right? So you need a higher pressure at one end of your tube um, and a lower pressure at the other end, okay? And what you're going to have is you're going to have flow from the area of higher pressure to the area of lower pressure, okay? The second thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a path for that blood to flow through, right? So if you had a pressure difference, but this whole pathway was blocked off, you wouldn't get any flow um, of your blood from this uh, location to this location. Um, so we need a path and the blood vessels act as that path. Um, so you can think of this as being very similar to what we saw with um, ions around, um, around our neurons. Right, so we had our driving force, which was the equilibrium potential for a neuron, um, and our path, right? So our ions could not change or could not move towards their equilibrium potentials unless channels were open for that ion. So same thing here. Okay, so I think I already said this. Liquids are gonna flow from high pressure to low pressure. Uh, and also flow is gonna depend on the pressure difference, not the absolute pressures. Okay, so like um, if you have a 20, uh, 20 millimeter of mercury difference between this location and this location, that's gonna be the driving force for the movement of blood. Um, so it's not gonna matter what the actual values of the pressure are here or here, okay? So we're gonna have some practice with that in class. All right, next concept that I wanna bring up is resistance, okay? So resistance is basically opposition to flow. Oh, sorry, that formatting is kind of messed up. So resistance is, uh, it's opposition to flow. Um, another way to think about it is flow is inversely proportional to resistance, right? So resistance is basically going to be whatever gets in the way of allowing your blood to flow, okay? And it's going to depend on several factors, okay? So it's going to depend on the length of the tube, it's going to depend on the viscosity of the fluid, and it's gonna depend on the radius of the tube. And what I would like you to do right now is to take a moment, you'll probably need to pause because it'll take a little bit of thinking, but think about how each of these factors would affect resistance. So for instance, if you increase the length of the tube, would that increase or decrease resistance? If you increase the viscosity of the fluid, would that increase or decrease the resistance, et cetera? Okay, so go ahead and hit pause now and think about that. Okay, so hopefully you figured out um, that as we go, actually I'm gonna go back. Okay, um, just going through each of these, right? So length of the tube, um, as you increase your length of your tube, you should encounter more resistance because it just, it, as your liquid goes through a longer tube, it's going to, it's just gonna be harder to go through that longer tube than it would be to go through a shorter tube, okay? Next up, viscosity of the liquid, right? So if you have a thicker, more viscous liquid, um, that's gonna be harder for that liquid to go through the tube. So as the viscosity of the liquid goes up, you should see a higher resistance, okay? And then finally, radius of the tube. Hopefully you figured out at that as your tube, maybe I'll do it like this, as your tube gets larger in radius, that's gonna make it easier for liquid to go through that tube. So, um, 
the radius of the tube is going to be uh, inversely proportional to resistance. So as resistance, as the radius of the tube increases, resistance will go down. Okay. Um, and those concepts are uh, sort of embodied in this equation called Poiset's law. The resistance is proportional to the length of the tube times the viscosity of the fluid. So this eta is viscosity of the fluid divided by um, the radius of the tube to the fourth power, okay? I just wanna mention, I don't actually expect you to know this, oh, it's not even an equation, but this mathematical relationship. Really what I want you to know is I want you to understand this concept like conceptually, right? So basically if you can answer these questions, that will make me happy. Okay, so I'm gonna close with this question. Uh, we just went over these concepts of pressure and resistance and flow. Why should you care? Uh, why am I teaching you this? Um, I wanna just kind of give you a preview of where this comes in uh, as it applies to the cardiovascular system. Okay, so uh, one of the things, uh, this is one example, is that we have a big pressure difference between the arteries and the vena cavi. So remember that blood is gonna come out of the heart. If we're looking at the systemic circulation, that blood is coming out of the heart via the aorta, and then it's gonna to return to the heart via the vena cavi, okay? And we get that drop in pressure uh, due largely to that friction that the blood encounters as it goes through these blood vessels. Um, but also it is this difference in pressure, right? So we have high pressure in the aorta, low pressure in the vena cavi. That pressure difference it is what drives the movement of the blood through the cardiovascular system, okay? Here is another reason to care about pressure and resistance. Okay, so um, remember that resistance is gonna change with blood vessel radius, right? So if you make your blood vessels uh, smaller, you get higher resistance and lower flow. If you uh, increase your radius, you're gonna get lower resistance and higher flow. Um, that really comes into play in the arterioles. Okay, so the arterioles are capable of changing their radius. And in doing so, they control the flow of blood to different tissues, right? So if, for instance, this arteriole is really skinny and this arteriole is really fat, then that's gonna direct the blood to this capillary bed here and away from this capillary bed here. And we'll look at that in greater detail when we talk about the blood vessels.